What's going on, y'all? So Ooh. So we're back again for another episode review of Black Ink Crush um New York. This season seven, episode five, Hot Dog Water and Abandoned Buildings. Okay. So, you know, I'm not gonna do too much because it's late and whatever. But this episode was kind of cute, though. I will say it had drama up to the fucking max. But I felt like it was a lot of displaced anger everywhere. Bitch, this bump is like dead ass in the middle of my forehead. I don't know what the fuck I do. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you be on this camera, you just see a whole bunch of shit. But no. Um, what wound up happening is the aftermath or the continuation, I should say, of the fight that happened at the end of last week's episode. Sky punched that boy. And you, you would think that somebody could have self-control because you a man and not hit a woman, but you have to understand that everybody ain't going to do that shit. So if you're going to fuck around and touch somebody, um, them reflexes might come up in there and naturally just want to hit your ass back, regardless of if you a man or a woman. So you took a risk, um, Scott, when you did that and your risk came true with the fact that he punched your ass back. Okay. Now I'm not sitting here condoning hitting bitches and hitting niggas like that. I don't like that. I didn't like the fact that Scott put her hand on him and I didn't like the fact that he put her, his hands on her but I'm not 100% mad at the fact that he did that because bitch you just like I said you don't know how niggas gonna respond some niggas ain't gonna do shit and some niggas natural reflex is to just fucking hit your ass back okay or some niggas will hit a bitch in a minute and don't give a fuck you know so hey you have to assess your situation and she assessed it wrong and you know Caesar did get one punch up off of him but that was just about it so all that huffing and puffing Teddy did most of the work okay no Teddy did all of the work and beat that nigga ass okay and so Caesar taking his shirt off he going upstairs I said nigga why are you so sweaty and um um what's his name Ted ain't okay and Ted was on top of that nigga gunning that motherfucker and you was just being held back by security and stuff like that and running around in the street that's what it was because you was running around in the street trying to make it seem like you really a tough guy and you really gonna do something but you go upstairs with um Donna Donna and her big ass Donna got a big ass like for real I said move the camera back um he's sitting on the edge of the tub and all I hear I said, bitch, is the motherfucker about to have a heart attack? Please take him to the hospital or something because that don't sound right. And then he goes right back outside trying to come for old boy and um walk. Here go walk. I said, walk, if you don't get your little scrawny ass back in the house, walk, walk. He's so fucking extra to me, okay? Like, he's likable to a certain extent, but then he's annoying as fuck as well. And that all extra shit, bitch, where the fuck was you at when they was fighting him, okay? Maybe I missed the melee, of, miss you in the melee, but, you know, he it just, it just felt like he came in after all the work was done, okay? You taking your shirt off with your little bird chest or whatever. I said, you got some nice pecs, though, for a little scrawny nigga, okay? You know, but... And you doing all this and you keep it going. That's my sister. Don't nobody put their hands on my sister. I don't give a fuck if she punched that nigga. Don't put this in. Blah, blah, blah. That's my sister. I said, nigga, shut the fuck up. They trying to calm the situation down. Walt come in and keep hyping it up. Caesar sitting in the room with Kitty. Kitty trying to calm him down, saying, whatever you need to do, we're going to be here by you, but you just need to calm down. You work too hard to come through to this point or whatever. And while still talking and shit, I'm like, you know what? Y'all so dumb, okay? And even Sky had to come through the next day and say, well, I did hit him first. It was like, so what if you hit him? He shouldn't have put his hands on you. True, but she shouldn't have put his hands, put her hands on him as well, okay? It's like, can we please hold people accountable for their actions? And that's the reason why all this stuff be popping off. But um, either way, that whole shit happened. And then Kitty comes in there and finds out, what happened with the shop and how he got vandalized. She went down there to the New Orleans shop and asked some of the tattoo artists who, uh, if they seen, no recognized anybody up in the tape. And come to find out, they did. They said these are um, other people that used to work with Herb at another tattoo shop. So basically, Herb was a um, mold, as they say. I told you that nigga was sneaky and I didn't trust him. Okay, Scott was actually right about not trusting him. If this is 100% real, which 9 out of 10 is not scripted as fuck. But, um, and I say scripted because if you want to try to do some damage to another shop or whatever, why don't you do enough damage to the point where they can't open up the next, literally 
an hour later after they clean up. Okay, they put some washable paint up on their wall. They flipped some chairs and that was it and broke a couple of glasses. Ooh, ooh, you know, and overturned a, a booth or two. Okay, they can fix that in less than 30 minutes. All right, all right, okay. If that's what you say, that's what you say. You know, um, um, her face was fucked up though. He was bleeding. It go, whoa, my sister been there bleeding. I said, bitch, where? <laughs> But anyway, you know, Melody get back to New York. She pulls up on the shop and it's this big makeshift ass sign that says Arts and Ink, which is Puma's shop name, um, over the bonnet of the shop. And she's like, what the fuck? Mind you, young Bay is in the shop. She was like, why didn't you take this down? Go inside the shop. It's a whole bunch of flyers and stuff in there. Now, on the one hand, I understand that what young Bay did was kind of dumb. Okay. Young Bay did the dumbest thing by inviting people into the shop, not realizing, and, and I don't even think she fully understands the severity of the situation that went down between Puma and Caesar, and then, you know, she was there for the oh shit thing, so, okay, but, um, she don't know the Puma shit like that, I'm, I'm assuming, because she wasn't there when that happened, like we were, all right, unless she was watching that TV at home like we was, which I doubt, but, okay, and what wind up happening is, oh, shit, comes through, help her out. And then Puma comes in, brings some other tattoo artists. They vibing over their babies and all this stuff. Kind of find out he really wasn't there to tattoo. He was there to throw a party and see the shit to piss him off. Okay. And on the one hand, I was with Melody. Like, you got to be smarter than that. Okay. You don't hire or you don't let people that you know for sure are not welcome into the shop into the shop regardless of what the situation is but on the other situation on the other hand this technically speaking is not 100% young bay's fault it's caesar's fault okay it's caesar's fault for hiring these fools to um be working in his shop it's caesar's fault for running his shop the way that he do okay it's caesar's fault for thinking that these dumb asses would stay in the goddamn shop and run it the way that he said run it while he was in New Orleans and not everybody hop on a plane and leave the shop vacant by themselves. It's Caesar's fault for pressuring and Kitty for pressuring fucking um young Bay to come back to work when she was on maternity leave, okay? And leaving her there with no help. So you have to take accountability for the, your part in this shit too, all right? So Melody's like, you're going to have to tell him uh, Alex and Donna come back and they didn't think, you know, she was worried if Caesar was there. And it was just them because Alex had to go talk to his dad. His dad said he had something called peripheral something. And basically what it is, he has a block artery in his leg or whatever. Blood is not circulating to his legs and stuff like that. And it could cause a stroke or a heart attack or even death or whatever. And I felt bad for Alex. That was a real ass moment or whatever. And so, um, they get that done. Skago get a dad, uh, damn dog. Okay. Whatever. Um, Alex was talking to them when they came in and <clears throat> before that, Young Bay had one on the head and said what happened about the black um, art to ink coming in. And Sky was like, you need to tell Caesar before I do. I said, bitch, we know that you're going to trick because you always do. Okay. But hey, it is what it is. She was right. She needed, she couldn't hide that shit because he was going to eventually find out either way. But it's better that you tell him before, you know, somebody else do because then it's going to be looking like you really was trying to do some underhanded stuff when you just got caught up in the bullshit. You really did. You were in, you were semi-innocent by standing in this shit. Okay, because you needed help, bitch. I would have came back because, bitch, you need, I needed fucking help. The fuck? But anyway, you know, they doing all of that. And um, what else wind up happening? Donna was supposed to come to the hospital with Alex. Man, let me just tell y'all this. That scene with Alex and his father and when his father broke down crying, knowing that they went through so much stuff. Knowing that they went through so much stuff to get to the where they are now and having a good relationship, that shit hurt my heart and that shit kind of made me tear up just a little bit to hear a grown man cry. It always do, just a little bit. Um, I ain't even gonna, I ain't even gonna lie. That shit with, um, oh shit at the end of the episode, that, that, that hit me too. I was sitting here like, damn, okay? I felt that shit. If that was, if that was any part that I felt was real, I felt the parts where Alex was real in that whole fight scene at the end of the episode. Not really the fight, but, um, when oh shit broke down, that shit was real. Um, 
So what wound up happening, Alex's daddy went through the surgery. Donna said she would be there. Alex was up at 5 o'clock in the morning for a surgery that I think was starting at 7 or whatever. He was there. Donna said she was on her way. And then Donna never showed up. Then we seen on the preview what's going to happen next week where Donna said, well, I forgot. I don't see what the big deal is. I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. Wait the fuck a minute. I need to see the whole thing in context to see what the fuck you saying, what the big deal is. And how you going to forget when he was calling you and texting you and all that stuff. And that's supposed to be your boo. And you would have wanted him to be there for you when you was going through some stuff. Like, how you going to forget something? Okay, that's some selfish shit right there. But um, moving on from that. So, skip, what's her name? Ted go out with Tati. I really don't care about that. Um... Caesar get back to the shop. Caesar hollering at Alex. Alex had a tattoo to do. The only person that did a tattoo that episode. And when he get through doing a tattoo or whatever, Caesar had come back. And when he seen Alex, he was mad at Alex because Alex was the one that hired her. So he hollering at Alex and all this. Day, you let this snitch bitch up up in here. You did this and you did that. You hired this and it is your fault. And Alex was like, bitch, I don't give a fuck right now. I'm going through a whole bunch of shit that's so much more um, better than this and so much more important and take priority than this bullshit that you're talking about. And to be quite honest... I really did not like the process of the way that they were hiring. First of all, I didn't know that anybody can just hire anybody in somebody else's shop. Okay, that's one. Okay, so you set the ground rules for this to happen. So, hey, Caesar, that's on you as well. You didn't go behind and check up on this man. You just went on ahead and took due word for it and said, well, I hired him, so therefore he good. Okay, three, you know, Alex, he didn't do all of his background work that he should have did, but technically speaking... It's not really his job to do that, but Caesar let him get away with it. So once again, this is your job as a fucking boss. And who was the goddamn manager who didn't check, check the stuff? Okay. Kitty didn't check behind it. Where the fuck was Walt at? He didn't check behind it. Ted didn't check behind it. So we're going to put it all on Alex. Okay. Where the fuck was y'all at? All right. Come on. Let's spread this responsibility and accountability to everybody that it deserves to be on. Okay. Because everybody shares blame in this shit. And that's dependent on one person. That's not fair. All right. Um, so he went in the back and he talking about something. Who the fuck he think he is talking to me like this? Caesar is a selfish son of a bitch right now, okay? First, you made Young Bay come up in there on her maternity leave two weeks out the goddamn hospital. Coochie still swollen from pushing a big-ass bowling head, bowling ball head-ass baby out. And I'm like, come on now. And now you pissing off because of this shit? You trying to blame this all on Alex? No, bitch. Take responsibility for your actions as well. You ain't being a good boss, okay? Then, um... You know, after that happened, we see later on that when he get pissed off, he had moved some stuff and he seen some flyers on the floor from Art to Ink. And that's when Young Bay had to go ahead and tell him what happened. And again, he's getting pissed off. Like, why would you do that and all this stuff and whoop de woo And I'm like, boy, shut the fuck up because you ain't about to do shit. You ain't about to do shit. They kept on trying to scare Bay, talking about you going to get fired. She ain't finna get fired for nothing, okay? Because deep down inside, he know he put her in that position that she had to do what she had to do, okay? And so, at that point, um, later on in the episode, at the end of the episode, um, Caesar was in the shop by himself, and he heard some clanking and stuff dropping on the floor and it was oh shit trying to get his pictures down or whatever caesar said first of all you gave that shit to me what the fuck you doing up in here you went and worked with my enemy so therefore you're dead to me right now okay and they start fighting whatever they didn't even fight they was wrestling okay they was wrestling like little girls and then they broke it up and um Caesar going down the line about all the stuff that he done for old shit. And what he's saying is true, okay? We seen it throughout the season, how Caesar was there for old shit throughout his struggles and all that shit. We saw how tight their bond was. But, you know, you come to a limit. You know, sometimes you reach a limit where you just say, I can't keep doing this bullshit with you no more for the sake of my health or whatever, okay, and my sanity. And I feel like that's what it was with Caesar mixed in with a little selfishness, but mostly because... You know, 
you keep doing the same thing and you fucked up. I keep trying to help you and you keep throwing it back in my face and, you know, keep fucking up. And sometimes you just got to let people go. That don't mean that you don't like them no more. That don't mean that you don't love them no more. You just got to let them go for the best of yourself. And then he went to go um, work with Puma. That was the nail in the coffin because we know the history between Puma and him. Now, on the one hand, I'm sitting here like, first of all, um, I can be cool with you and I can be cool with him. That don't mean just because y'all cool, not cool with each other don't mean that I can't be cool with both of y'all. On the other hand, you know the history. And so you know how he worked. Why would you want to go and um do that? And I think that he was going to say, bitch, we done. Okay, you know how he is. So you put that on yourself. You took a risk once again. All y'all taking risks up in here. Y'all need to go look up risk management because y'all ain't managing that shit well either. Okay, um, y'all taking all these risks and they ain't working out for you. Uh, At this point, I feel like this one part, I feel like it was staged because when they threw the party, whatever, why would you wait? Until Caesar gets back and she just so happens to be the only person in the shop. How you know that? Because the producers told you to come down there. That's what it was. Why you didn't get your pictures of stuff or whatever so you can avoid all this bullshit um, when you came there when Caesar was gone? Because y'all needed a scene and y'all wanted some drama. That's what it is, okay? Y'all set this shit up so they can fight and all this stuff. Conveniently, nobody else is in the shop but the camera crew. <laughs> Woo, convenient, you know, and they fought and, well, they wrestled, okay, that's what they did, you touch me, I touch me back, you know what I'm saying, that type of shit, and then, you know, you got, uh, um, um, Richard, like, um, I loved you, I still love you, and I always love you, you was my bro, I, I'm, 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 much as this shop is mine, it's yours, and all this stuff, you always, um, putting down the main folks and all this shit, and he was like, why would you say some shit like that to me? You went over there to um, work with Puma. You dead to me right now. And when he was crying and that voice was crackling, I believed him. I believed him. But at this moment in time, Caesar is such a prideful man that he's not going to... It's, it's going to take a whole lot for him to come back to, oh, shit. And to be quite honest, I feel like, you know, he's going to still be mad at, oh, shit. Give it about... Give it a little bit and they're going to be cool again. It's It's... it's even he even even if Caesar could have put his pride aside with Puma, they could have still been back on the same track. But you know, it is what it is. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about this episode, and I will see you guys later. Peace.